All right, thank you for staying with Daybreak. Let's start that conversation. And we asked you earlier on, what do you think is the role of the church in politics? We'd like to hear from you at Trevor Mbija at Citizen TV Kenya. Use the hashtag Daybreak. We're still waiting for Reverend Sami Wanaina, provost at the All Saints Cathedral, is on his way. And Dr. Pamela Odiambo, also women rep Migori, is also on her way. As soon as they come in, we'll just usher them in right into the conversation, which will begin right now. Vincent Ombaka, lawyer and policy consultant, is here with us. Thank you for making time. And Suzanne Silantoy, governance and policy expert as well has already made it to studio. And Vincent, I'll start with you. What do you think is the role of the church when it comes to politics? I think the role of the church is uh, widespread. And uh, many Kenyans normally look at church as a single focus, supposed to be mediator. And that is the good thing about this, com this summit that we are having, is that it is spreading out the whole role of the church from being a citizen into being the church as a participant. The church... Uh, the church's role as a, as a moderator, the church's role as a custodian of values. And uh, one of the things we are doing, which I personally am passionate about, is about Africans loving God with their minds. You know, many people may have heard of the thing of love God with your mind, heart, strength. I feel like for Africans, being convinced and bringing their minds, their brains along to church is normally a, a challenge sometimes. And so we are exploring the whole aspect and just basically saying that, look, in politics, the church is involved from end to end. Christians serve a God who is not a Sunday God. He is a Monday to Monday God. And therefore, when it comes to politics, we want to see what are Christians supposed to be doing in politics? What are Christians supposed to be doing as voters? What are Christians supposed to be doing as policy influencers? What are Christians supposed to be doing as moderators and as mediators when there's a conflict? And what are Christians supposed to be doing as custodians of values? And simply put, it's like if you ask yourself, if God was watching a match between Manchester United and Arsenal, which team is he supporting? The answer to that question is neither. He is watching his children play and he expects them to play fairly and let the winner win. Yeah. And so you see, God is on both sides. He's with Arsenal, he's with Manchester, he's with the referee, he's with the audience. He's just expecting fair play. He expects the players not to hurt each other. He expects the referee not to be unjust. He expects the, the fans not to throw chairs inside the, 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 the field. And that is the, the space of the church. Yeah. In politics, church is from end to end. Yeah, that's a very good analogy there. But Suzanne, what do you think is the role of the church? You've been in this mucky waters of politics. Yeah. What have um, you experienced? I think just to comment that maybe God forgot us and all for a bit for a couple of years. <laughs> but we hope he, he remembers us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think when we talk about politics, we've always seen politics as a... It, it's always been people-centered, individual-centered. When politics should be about specific issues. So politics is about economic issues. Politics is about environmental issues. Police is about uh, just social justice issues. It's about uh, climate change. That's, that's what politics is about. And if you ask whether the church should be involved in politics, it's asking, should the church have a say in environmental issues as an institution uh, and, as a, and as an individual church member, should you have a say in this kind of um, issues? And I, and I believe so, because at the end of the day, the church is, a, uh, is an institution that is, uh, is big in the country, first of all. It has a large network. It has a very great influence. And so it has to play a role uh, in shaping issues that ideally involve a political process, these economic issues, social justice issues. Um, and as citizens, as individuals, it is our civic duty <laughs> to participate in the role of shaping the country's um, policies, the country's agenda. Um, and then through this, we're able to do this as a, uh, infusing our Christian values. And so asking whether the church should be involved in politics is like asking a citizen whether they should be involved yeah. in the country's affairs. Uh, and so the, the church does have a significant role to play. Yeah. Um, but also as, a, as individuals, we do have our individual roles to play, like he said, in our different spaces, as policymakers, as journalists, as um, people in our different spaces, we yeah. do have a role to play as a church. Um, is it difficult to navigate this uh, political space as a Christian? Absolutely. Um, I think uh, something that I personally experienced while I was campaigning uh, when I was trying to vie for Senate in Nairobi is um, 
you you have like a christian you have to carry your christian values wherever you go you're a monday to monday christian and not necessarily not a sunday christian and so uh if i go campaigning there are quite a number of people who would ask for bribes and i'd respectfully decline <laughs> because they're not in, in line with my values did that hurt my chances yeah probably it did uh but uh it, it doesn't deter me from from participating because at the end of the day everybody has their own challenges and people abide to specific values yeah. and if my values are in a specific context that's what I'm going to abide by um, but that should not be a limiting factor for participations of for participation of Christians within the political process yeah. yeah so picture this you walk into a church and I don't know what your experience was like was there a point where you'd realize that certain politicians were given more priority than others and was there also a point where you'd think that if all of us as politicians are given a chance to speak and we essentially then taking over this someone um, it depends. It depends on which church you go to. Uh, I think when we talk about the church, we have to uh, realize how diverse the church is um, in, in terms of denominations, in terms of the assemblies, and each of these uh, institutions actually run differently depending on who is in leadership. And so, personally, the church that I go to, I fellowship at Sitam um, Valley Road. Um, there's clear instructions about mode of engagement with politicians. They're not given the platform um, to campaign. You will probably say hello, <laughs> will recognize your presence, uh, but that's, that's just about it. Uh, Sunday service is Sunday service, and that's what we're going to do. Um, but I do see um, some of these uh, things happening in other churches, um, which should, you know, be limited in a sense, because at the end of the day, um, Congregants have gone to church <laughs> for a specific purpose. If, if I wanted to listen to politicians, I would go to a rally yeah. or I'd watch the news. Uh, but it, uh, it, it's upon the leadership of those individual churches to dictate how to engage with these politicians. And so, yes, uh, there are some politicians who are given priority, maybe because you know they hold a high office or because... Uh, you know, just the respect that comes with the offices that they hold. Yeah. Is that a bad thing? Um, probably not. It's just, it's respectful. However, the, the leadership of those churches do need to define the mode of engagement with yeah. those politicians. All right. Vincent, you mentioned that when, and you gave the analogy of Arsenal and Manchester and said that God just wants the game to be fair. Yes. But where is the position for the truth in that? Because when it comes to the church, if you're essentially neutral, then you're not leading the flock in any way. Where is the position for the truth of this is the position the church is taking on this agenda? Why should they be neutral when it comes to politics and yet they're not neutral when it comes to things like corruption? I think the problem is our perspective of politics is quite narrowed down. Our perspective of politics in this country, and actually right, right now globally, is personality based so that we are constantly in the business of trying to put you in a box are you right wing are you left wing are you feminist are you patriarchal you know so you're all this are in kenya are you hustler are you i'm forgetting the other term and uh, that reveals the the, the extent to which i'm not up to speed with with whatever is, is, is going on so we are constantly trying to put people in a box but what we are saying looking at the analogy of the match is that there are values that are supposed to be binding on both people because there are certain issues for which god is n n not really giving you a position for instance you woke up this morning you do, as a christian you don't have to start saying oh heavenly father should i wear a white or a black suit it's like son you have clothes pick one you know the way in the bible adam animals were brought to him and he gave them names God did not go like, ah, I think that's supposed to be a chimpanzee. No, no, no. He was like, whatever name he gave them, that was it. So there is a capacity. There are things which are not principle. They are not core. You know, in terms of which economic decisions should we be able to make. But there are some things which are, are core. For instance, integrity is core. Whether, whichever side of the divide. Because if you look at the, 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 the political divides, a lot of them are historic you may find yourself supporting a particular political party because or in your region, that was the person who was lucky enough to be educated by 1955 when people were going to Lancaster House Conference. And therefore, automatically you found yourself aligned to a particular political outfit. Now, within those realities, it is expected of you as a believer to work within those realities and be the voice of reason there. And I will give you a good analogy from the Bible. There's somebody called Elijah who was like the main opposition during the time of somebody called King Ahab, 
who was an evil king by all standards. But inside King Ahab's administration, there was somebody called Obadiah, who was serving God. So can you look at this? Elijah serving God on the opposition, Obadiah serving God in the evil government. In fact, when Obadiah meets Elijah, he tells Elijah, I have been hiding a hundred prophets of God. So you see, it means that we, you're having two people on different both sides of the divide, but each of them doing what is right. So I expect, I expect any Christian on any side of the political divide to be able to stand up and say, this is true. And not just to say things which are going to favor them, including a lie. You know, sometimes being willing to say, by the way, I think my brother, that point is good. You know, what if all politicians, because at the end of the day, politicians present themselves as they want the fatherlands of the country. True? I mean, there is no politician whom will go and they will tell you that, by the way, for me, me, I want to rip this country apart. I want to rob it. I want to steal from it. They never tell you that. Nobody in his right mind can ever say that. So it means they have a core value system somewhere that they are ascribing to. We expect Christians to be the voice of reason on those sides of the divide, irrespective of where you are. So that if you are in ODM and somebody else in, the, in, in UDA says something which makes sense, you're supposed to stand up and say, that is right and that is good for the country. Even if both of you, you know, it's not, it's not a mass that the only two, the two major camps are the ones who have got a monopoly of creativity. There may be a third person out there who is saying something or who has the capability of building the country in a way that these two main camps had not thought of, then the Christians in both sides should stand up and tell their principles, we think there is somebody here, a third party, who is having a better idea than what both of you are having. Yeah, but doesn't that then open the floodgates? You know, because then there are diverse, diverse opinions everywhere. Where then does the church stand? Because if you then give everyone the opportunity to say whatever they want to say, the conversation twists. No. And the, and, con and the congregants are confused. And that's where I bring you to the point of, remember when I began by saying, I am enthusiastic about Christians loving God with their mind. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind. If we start loving God, if we open up our minds to interact with God, we realize truth is absolute. There are values, there are bare minimums. When that's what we are doing in this summit, we are trying to interrogate and get down to the principle. Yeah. That what is the principle here? What would Jesus do? That's the major question. And let me give you simple examples. Do you know in the book of, I think it's the book of John, that when police officers at that time went to John the Baptist, he told them, Tosheka nam shareako. Imagine, 2,000 years ago, policemen were having a problem living on their salaries. They were collecting bribes. And those solutions were being given. Back then, you know, if we start walking, if I start walking with you in scripture, and you will see very applicable things, food security, what did Joseph do? Joseph just told people, in the years of abundance, keep money. Because there are tough years coming ahead. Right now, the whole world is going through a pandemic. The countries which were wise in terms of spending when they had an abundance. Because at any given point in history, countries have had an abundance. There was a time when our flower industry was doing well, isn't it? There was a time when our tea was doing well. There was a time when our coffee was doing well. What did we do with that opportunity? What if we applied the wisdom of Joseph at that time? So that now when COVID hits, or when, before even COVID hit us, our tourism sector was hit by Al-Shabaab. What if when our tourism sector was in a boon, we had somebody who could apply the mind of Joseph in the affairs of government? So that when the linears come, you can be able to sail through it. Okay. So that's what I'm saying. When people start interrogating scripture, yeah. and not when people are looking at other philosophy, because anything you do has a philosophy behind it. There's a philosophy behind your tie, or behind even your dressing. Because I can tell you, we think we are decent, isn't it? But I can assure you, 300 years ago, our forefathers walked naked, but they were very decent. In fact, they were probably more moral than we are today. So you, you realize there's actually a philosophy behind everything. But we want to bring people, center them on the success stories and the principles grounded in the Bible to help them navigate their realities wherever you are. All right. I have to take a quick break on that note. I see Reverend Sami Wanena is already here, Provost All Saints Cathedral, and Dr. Pamela Odiambo, Women Rep Migori, will find out their views in just a bit. I see your views also coming through. Use the hashtag Daybreak at Trevor and Bidjad, Citizen TV Kenya. What really is the role of the church when it comes to politics? That is the question we are asking. See you in just a bit. <laughs> 